Hey everybody, I'm Marie Bard Curtis of the Quilted Poodle. In today's short video, I'm going to show you how to use templates as part of Pattern CAD. So when you go to the opening screen after you open QCT, if you go to Try Other Product Tiers, you will notice Template Designer is listed as part of uh, QCT and QCT Gold. So it's a feature that you already have without having the gold card. So I'm going to show you how it works. If you open up Pattern CAD, go to the red toolbox, Templates, Load. So when you do that, you're seeing all the templates that are preloaded, and I have a few additional templates in my um, that have been saved. If you follow the hierarchy, you'll see the C drive powered by QuiltCAD, Patterns, and Templates. That's where you will find the original templates that QCT created for you. And if you have created any on your own, they will also be located there. So if I close out of that, and I had occasion for a client to ask me how she could fill in the splines of a star with a particular design that already came in QCT. So if I go back to the red toolbox, templates, new, then I can begin creating a template that I can add my design into. And in this particular case, it was the spline of a star. So I'm going to go, I'm going to select draw, I'm going to use continuous lines because this design, I want to have all the lines touch each other. So I'm going to start here, draw down to here, draw to here, over here, and then back up here. Very simple design. Um, and as I look at it, I think maybe I need to bring this point here down a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is go to Edit. Then I'm going to select the point right here by clicking on a space around it and selecting it, and then just dragging downward so it gives it a little more of a point. And then as I look at the sides, perhaps I want to bring those in a little bit. So I must go to Unselect All. I will choose this point, then bring it in, unselect all, choose this point, bring it in. Okay, unselect. And I think this looks even, and if I wanted to be sure, I could count from my center um, X and Y axis out to the point. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it is equal um, distance on each side. So now what I want to do is save this template. So I'm going to go to my toolbox, template, save. And I'm just going to call this test. Enter and save. And just to be sure that it's there, I can go to the red toolbox, template, load, and there it is, the test. Okay? Now, Notice the sides of this design are still red. So what I'm looking at is not an actual template anymore. It's just the design that I drew. So I'm going to get rid of that. When you bring up a template, I'm going to load, and I'm going to bring up the test and open. Templates are always shown in blue. So it means these lines cannot be edited and you will fit your design inside of there. So I'm going to select a pattern, go to patterns, and I want to go to the triangle folder. And for GPF was the design that she wanted to put inside of the spine. 
Okay, so as you can see, it doesn't exactly fit. And it doesn't really matter what size it is right now because after I create the design inside of the template, when I get ready to place that on my quilt, I will be sizing it then. All right, so I want to select this whole design because currently it's too small. So at the very least, I need to at least stretch it. So I'm going to go to transform and stretch. So I will at least get it to be as long as my template. Maybe that's even a little bit too, too long. So I'll shrink it a little bit. And then I'm going to go to move and I've got tiny selected, so it'll just move a tiny little bit. So, whoops, that's pretty far. I'm going to change this. Uh, yeah, tiny is as small as I can move it. Okay, let's try moving again. There we go. Small. So I'm going to try to get the design in the center. And that looks like it's in the center. And now I'm going to move it up so that the top of this design sort of fits up into the point there. Okay, I'm liking that. Um, I think I need to move it just to the left of here. So I'm going to go back to the step and change it to tiny and then move it to the left. Okay, I like that. Now, what I need to do is to further fit my design inside of this template. So I'm going to unselect all and then begin adjusting it so that it will fit. So I think I would like to choose this point and move it to here. Unselect, choose this point, move it to here, unselect, choose this point, which is my ending point, move it to there, unselect, move this point, and notice it's got the green circle around it, so that's my starting point. And I'm going to move that over here. And those points are just about across from each other. Unselect. So I can see where that point is going to start. So I do want to edge it over just a little bit closer to the side of that template. So again, I'm going to select that point and move it just a tad. And unselect. Maybe I won't be able to get it any closer than that. And in fact, I'm going to try one more time. And I'm going to try using my arrow key to the left to see if I can just get it to move. Okay, unselect. Uh, it moved a little bit, and so I'm going to say I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. And this one is outside a little bit. Now what I want to try to do is to get this curve inside of my template. So let's see what I can do. I'm still in edit mode. I'm going to choose this point and this point. And when I select both ends of this curve, I then find my handle. And the handles are the things that you use to adjust a shape. And let's see what I can do with it. There we go. By just moving the handle inward, I'm able to bring that shape within my template. So I'm going to unselect all. And now I'm going to go to this point and this point. And having selected the two ends of this line, I find my handle, 
which I'm going to move to bring my design within the template. And I'm going to move it just a hair more. Oops, other direction. Okay, so now I kind of like the way that's looking. It's fitting inside of my template. I'm going to unselect all, and this is the pattern I now have. So if you recall what it looked like, it certainly did not fit within this spline. This is going to be the spline of a star. So now I have a pattern that will fit into this particular shape of a, of a design, and I'm going to save it. So when I save it, it's going to save just that design and not the template. So I'll go to the Save Pattern file here, or I can use the file and do Save. Save Pattern. And I'm going to call this um, one space test. I put a one in front of it because it will then um, locate it in front of all of the other items so I don't have to look too far for it. Hit enter and save. Okay, and I'm going to clear my space. Okay, and now what I have left is the template and I want to remove that. I'm going to go to the red toolbox template unload okay it's gone so now what I want to do is to bring up the picture of the design that I actually want to use so I'm going to go to background load image navigate to the image and there it is and then I'm going to fit my design on top of that into one of the splines so I think I'll make this a little larger there we go and now I'm going to select my pattern and there it is one test and notice it has created a GPF file okay um, I don't know if you can see it it's there in red so what I can do on the background is to fade it Makes it a little bit lighter. Maybe fade one more time. And then I'm going to invert. So now my colors are dark, but my design is in red. So I can still see it, and that will help me place it. So the first thing I'm going to do is line it up with my spline. And interestingly enough, the area that I want to place it in is right within here. So I'm going to have to shrink it quite a bit to fit in there. So I'm going to select all, transform group. Um, I'm going to go to the stretch selection when in fact I'm actually shrinking it. Okay. And now I'm going to move it. I'm going to change the steps to be a little bit larger so that I'm moving it a little more. Now I'm going to go back to tiny and move to the left. Um, I think that lines it up pretty much in the center. Now I have points that are way out here, but in my original design they actually fit right in there. So I'm going to try transforming again, stretch, and then shrinking it down a little more. How about a little bit more? Bit more. Okay. I'm going 
go to select and unselect. So now I'm kind of seeing how my design is going to fit in there. And it actually looks like it's tilted a little to the right. So I can rotate. I'm going to select all. I'm going to try to rotate my design one degree. Maybe one more degree. Good. And now I want to move it again, tiny amount to the left. Okay, I think that is pretty well situated in there. And now I'm going to take my, turn the nodes off so I can see how my pattern is fitting in there. So I think I can stretch it a little bit um, in both directions, horizontally and vertically. So I'm going to select all, and I'm going to go to the size, and I am going to lock my lock because I like the aspect ratio of how it fits in terms of its vertical length and its horizontal width. And now I want to grow it just a tad. I'm still in tiny, let's go to small, and let's grow the design. I think that looks pretty good. So I can save this design, and I'm going to save that as my one test again save. It already exists and I'm going to save it again. So this is what the design will look like that will stitch out into this particular spine. Then I will set it again and stitch it in that spine, set it again, stitch it in that spine, set it again, and stitch it out there. Uh, the other thing that I could possibly do is to keep creating additional um, groupings of the spine. But know that I believe this is the starting point over here, ending point over here, and unless you want to do some other work to connect it, you will have to break thread at the end of each design and then um, stitch another spline. So that's kind of uh, a more advanced step, but quick and dirty this is how you do one spline and then move it to the next uh, spline of your star. But like I said, you can go further and connect your designs together. So that might be a video for a later date. When you're ready to place this design on your quilt, you're going to use Select and Sew. And then try the various placement methods such as triangle, four point stretch, and then be sure to trace before you sew. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching. God bless.